Hello, hello, everybody. It's going to be a great day. You know why? Kelsey, I feel like you should come in and be like, why? Because we are going to get better and we're going to do it together. (laughs) Yeah, I'll do it. No, I mean, I just, you know, it's funny, like when (laughs) people do those little uh, call outs, but yeah, we are, uh, we are going to know better. We're going to get better and we're going to do it together, friends. Our quote for today is what Kelsey got for us. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves. That is from William Shakespeare. I, uh, I love a little Shakespeare. Um, Welcome to any of our new listeners. The studio is still under construction, so I'm coming to you from the kitchen uh, here in LA. And we're really excited because today we are chatting with renowned astrologer, psychic medium, Jessica, about what 2023 is going to look like for us, astrologically at least. Uh, I will prepare you all. It's a lot. But she also has really incredible nuggets that I think will make you stop and think. Um, she's very uh, she's very studied. She really keeps up with what's going on in the world. Um, and even just like certain security things to have in your settings for your phone. And I didn't know that these apps that are offloading, right? When we have more memory than ever, they should just all be able to be there is really just uh, a ruse so that we can re-download them and accept their privacy settings the way they are so that they can keep filming and recording us. So there's a lot of really constructive information in here, along with some, you know, less than exciting news for 2023. We'll just say it like that. But in the meantime, uh, you know, we're going to do what we can and we have to keep on plugging along. But it is very interesting because when we had her on, uh, last time she made a prediction and I wrote it down and it did come true. And so, uh, that's at least one receipt that I have, and we'll talk about receipts in this episode, but she is a humanistic astrologer, psychic medium, tarot reader, and animal communicator. She started her private practice in 1994. She's met with thousands of people from across the globe. She communicates between the living and their lost ones. She's helped connect people with their pets through live animal communication. She is the host of the top ranking astrology and advice show, Ghost of a Podcast, and was the co-host of TLC's digital show, Stargazing. Um, Really excited to have her back on the show today. And before we roll into our conversation, I just want to remind you all that uh, Macy's.com backslash Hail Squad has all of my curated picks. It's a new year. It's a new you. You're probably looking for some workout gear, potentially. I've got that on there. Um, I know a lot of us want to focus on our physical health as well as all of the other mental, spiritual, and emotional. But on the physical plane, I can help you with some really great picks in the fitness category. Uh, Macy's.com backslash heel squad. Check it out. Of course, anything you buy through that link, whether it's something I've curated or if you click out and just buy something else, it credits for the show and, or we get credit for it on the show and it helps us continue to bring you all this great content. So thank you for supporting us through Macy's.com backslash Hill squad. Uh, and I guess without further ado, let's hear what 2023 is going to bring us. Happy new year. Good to see you again. I know it's funny. I, um, I should have looked this up before, but I know last time we chatted with you on the show, you made a prediction and you said that like kind of all hell was going to break loose and it was going to be crazy. And you gave us a date and I marked the date in the calendar and I kind of let it go. And then I wake up on that day and that's when Russia invaded Ukraine. Damn. I didn't even remember doing that. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, I will say I go out of my way when I make predictions to not follow up on them Um, because I have such, I mean, I don't mean to sound arrogant, but I have such a certainty and a clarity about what I see and what I, what I actually say um, that I don't know. I know we're in like a world where it's very important to have receipts and everybody's like, here are my receipts. I said this on Tuesday and now it's what, you know, but I, I just kind of like let it go. Kind of like you said, cause it's just easier to live like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
I mean, I guess good for me for being able to predict something atrocious, but also what a world, what a world. (laughs) I know. So it's 2023. Mm -hmm. We've just begun. What do you see for this year? And maybe we even start with Russia and Ukraine. And is that going to escalate and get worse? Right. Because there are people that are afraid. I know when I went home, my dad was scared. He's like, Maria, they're saying Russia is going to use nuclear power now or whatever they were saying. I don't know. Don't listen to everything I'm saying, guys, because I don't watch the news. This is secondhand, thirdhand stuff. But, you know, there's a lot of fears around what's going on there. So maybe we start with that, too. Yeah. So I will preface what I'm going to say with um, it is really important when seeking predictions from an astrologer or a psychic or even a political analyst to know that, first of all, no one knows until it's happened. And second of all, predictions are only valuable if they motivate us to do something to kind of co-create the best possible outcomes. Ooh, so, right? Don't say anything further. Please explain that further. I okay. love that. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. I'm so glad because this is so important to all of us and, of course, to me as a predictor. Um, the reality is, how will I put this? Like, okay, I'm in California And there have been predictions that tomorrow there's going to be a terrible rainstorm after last week's terrible rainstorm. That prediction may or may not come true. We've all known that weather sometimes predictions do happen, don't. But it's really helpful for me personally to hear that prediction because my basement tends to flood. So now I'm doing all the things I need to do to protect my basement from flooding or protect things from not getting wet. I canceled my plans to have lunch outdoors, to be covered safe and have lunch outdoors because it's going to be terrible weather. Like there's things that that prediction empowered me to do to protect my happiness and my stuff and all that kind of stuff, right? Now, there are other kinds of predictions that there's nothing I can do. And so all I do is sit around wringing my hands, like maybe like an earthquake, like, you know, everyone likes to say the big one's coming to California. So, you know, you secure your heavy pieces of furniture to the wall and you get your house retrofitted if you can and all these kinds of things to get a go bag. But really at the end of the day, you just cross your fingers and hope for the best. And people talking about California falling into the ocean isn't that practical, right? So I use this very hopefully like relatable example to say a lot of people turn to astrologers, psychics um, at the new year to tell, tell me what's going to happen. Tell me what, what to expect from the world, from my love life, whatever. And we do it out of fear and we do it out of kind of like, you know, for fun, lots of different reasons, but generally Curiosity. Fear and fun. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the two big ones. And inevitably you may hear something that acts like a little earworm that messes with your brain that doesn't go away. And that can become a self-fulfilling prophecy that can add to the things that have you shut down or overreact or look for simple answers. And these days there is the, uh, you know, con spirituality pipeline that is very dangerous that is happening that a lot of people who are, uh, especially women who are in the new age world, there's like a white supremacy, like there's a new age to white supremacy pipeline. We have to be very mindful of what's and a con. You said something about a con, con. spirituality. What's so, that? Okay. So, and I am not an expert in it. I did once on my podcast, um, have Abby Richardson, who is an expert in it, um, come on to talk about QAnon. And QAnon is a form of like con spirituality. Con spirituality is when it's spiritual convictions that are rooted in conspiracy theories. And they essentially seek to, they, they create lots of theories that take us further and further from reality, from doing something in reality to make things better. And it's always scapegoating a certain demographic of people or certain demographics of people. That's always the thing. It's, you know, scapegoating Democrats, scapegoating Jews, scapegoating whatever it is. And con spirituality has pieces of, you know, new age spirituality, other forms of woo, Buddhism, Christianity, lots of other things. Um, But it is not, but it's something we need to be really mindful of. And, you know, again, I, I am not an expert in con spirituality, but because I am, 
a spiritual practitioner with a following online. It's something I try to be mindful of because when I'm when I'm talking about what we're going to talk about, which is political stuff, or, you know, I'm also a medical astrologer and a medical intuitive. So if I talk about health stuff uh, in public, I'm always really aware that I am on that slippery slope um, of con spirituality because taking medical advice or political predictions from an astrologer or psychic you know, of course I think, yeah, listen to me. I got things to say, you know, I'm right. Sure. But also if you're not doing it with a massive grain of salt, maybe not one grain of salt, maybe like a canister of salt, and you're not pairing what you hear from the psychic or the astrologer with your common sense, with facts, you know, if we're talking about something medical from epidemiologists, doctors, yada, yada, you know, if we're not doing that, then we risk sliding down this slope where we lose touch with reality instead of using spirituality as a tool for becoming more aligned, more present, and better participants in our lives and the world around us. So we don't become kind of like toxic individualists where we only use our spirituality for our individual betterment as though that could be separated from the betterment of the world, right? So- yeah, that's deeply important stuff to me. It's the stuff I like obsessively think about. But again, I'm not an expert on talking about or educating about. Yeah, I, I like the um, the differentiation of of you know your spiritual betterment for yourself, but trying to separate it from the masses, right? Because we are one. It's very yes. interesting. Um, okay, so here we come with our massive mason jar of salt. Yes. Mason and, yes. and we're going to, to me, it's kind of like a set it and forget it. Right. When I do a reading or something, it's like, okay, I'm curious. I want to know most people go to someone like you in a really hard time and they're desperate. They need help. They need answers. I've done that too. Most of the time I go for curiosity and then I just kind of I'm like, oh, wow, that would be cool. And then I just let it go. And then later you're like, oh my God, it happened (laughs) or whatever. So here we are with our mason jar of salt. What do you see? First, we'll we'll start because you made that prediction that, you know, came through about Ukraine and Russia. You didn't specify that. You just said all hell's going to break loose that day. And that day is when the war started. Um, I am curious to think what you see for that. And mm-hmm. then we'll go further, kind of widen out the uh, the predictions. Yeah. So nothing is set in stone, but there are a myriad, many, many, many uh, indicators of world war. Um, and, you know, for people who've been listening to my podcast since I started it in 2018, I have been trying to gently, but firmly share that. I just want to cry right now. I just I know, chills I'm so all the way down my body. I know. I'm so sorry. This is why I was just like, I gave you this and massive emotional shit. I know it's, <laughs> it is truly, truly terrifying. And, um, and hopefully I'm wrong. I would prefer obviously to be wrong. So I personally will have a party If I turn out to be wrong, I will throw a party. You're invited. Um, (laughs) But uh, yeah, and I don't even like parties. I'm a Capricorn. But um, I hope that's wrong. But there are many indicators of it. And so for me, there's been a number of key things that have happened over the last several years that have been like, okay, those are the things I'm going to watch out for as uh, kind of signifiers of um, World War. The first one was um, the U.S. going to Iran and executing Soleimani. Um, That was back in 2019, I think. And I hope I'm saying it right. I hope I'm saying his name right. But um, and then Iran like raised the red flag of war. I think it's a red flag. I can't remember exactly against the U.S. And I was like, okay, we need to pay attention to that because of these indicators. Of course, what's happening with Russia. Um, And to me, it's, yes, the war between Russia and Ukraine, but there is also a disinformation war being waged here in the U.S., um, you know, from various countries, including Russia. So that is not nothing. That is actually, unfortunately, a big part of what I'm looking out for. Because when we talk about war, there are wars like what is happening in Ukraine, And then there are 
there's different forms of war now, right? We have the ability to have cyber war um, and cyber warfare. There's wars of disinformation. There, there are, you know, what is happening in Iran right now. I mean, that looks like war to me from the government to its people. Um, there, so I don't want to like panic um, you or anyone else. I don't, th there's no value in it. But all we have to do is look around the world, just around the world to see this very strong theme of destabilization and the rise of fascistic strongmen leaders. Um, and I will affirm that there is a very strong component of this of conspirituality. Um, and the rise of conspiracy theories and uh, spiritual convictions underlying them. Uh, and that is, again, there's like a lot of astrology behind that, which I can talk about, but it'll kind of sound like a bit in the weeds. But it is, they're, they're all interconnected from my perspective. And I think from the perspective of a lot of political analysts. Um, and I do have serious concerns about that. Now, in terms of the specifics between Russia and Ukraine, I haven't looked to make predictions about that because of what I see happening around the world, unfortunately. Um, but it, I have looked at Putin's chart, um, and this is the chart of a man who will not ever stop or give up. He is, I mean, but again, you just have to look at his life, what we know of it, to know that this is true, right? You, there's already evidence of this, um, that... This is not a person who's like, you know, I started something that I shouldn't have. I'm going to backtrack. This is not a person who will do that. And, and that just kind of says everything that needs to be said. Um, and then the question becomes, you know, what, what will we do about it? And there's like me and you, we're not going to do anything. I mean, we might do some things, but like we're not going to fix the war in Ukraine. It's That's not the kind of power we have. But there's this larger thing happening astrologically uh, called the Pluto return of the United States. There's also, we're stepping this summer into the Chiron return of the United States. And these, and the Pluto return of the United States has never happened before in our history as a nation. It happens once every 250 years. I remember you mentioning this last time. Mm -hmm. And the Chiron return happens every 50 years. So the last time it happened was between 1973 and 75. Um, and that was a really intense time. Uh, Watergate, Nixon stepped down. You know, there was a massive recession throughout 73 and 75 um, related to oil and OPEC and all these other things. Um, there was a lot of other things happening in this nation. But, you know, Roe Ro had just been established as law. It either happened in 73 or right before. Um, so there is this massive confrontation we as a nation are having with our genocidal uh, roots and our misogynist roots. And, you know, the extreme, the, the, the fraction of the U.S. that is like very extreme in its religious convictions is, again, very much at root um, of this nation and some of the things we have to deal with, not just in how we are as a nation domestically, although for sure that anyone who's alive now knows there is just so much uh, division, right? But also we as a nation have to answer for how we've participated in the world at large because we go into other countries and we tell them how to run their governments. And we, you know, we, we have our hands in so many other nations and we have for a very long time. And we are having to deal with concept of that, the good, the bad, the ugly. So I, you know, I try to be very, again, careful because I don't want anyone to panic when you hear my, uh, my hot takes here, you know. Um, but I do have concerns. I mean, I am not a financial astrologer. That's not my passion or anything. But I have concerns about the economy taking a very serious hit for the next couple of years. Um, and I don't really care about the economy, but what I care about is what that means for the people. It is important that we we come together, you know, and I, I think that this is like in terms of like actionables, Saturn moves into Pisces for the first time in 29 years um, this March, and it joins Neptune there. Uh, and the last time, fun fact, Neptune and Saturn were both in the sign of Pisces together was in 
the 1840s, 1846 through 49, I believe, which was a time of revolutions where people across mm-hmm. Europe and, and other regions of the world um, engaged in revolutions against monarchies. And they did this for different reasons in different nations. But, and again, I'm not a historian. So, you know, cross, re- you know, I could be making mistakes, cross reference everything I say, you know, we're using our mason jar of salt. Um, but this is a, this was a time where basically the people were like, we deserve rights. And in different nations, it was different rights. So they fought against the monarchies and they lost. And they all crossed all the nations. Some in some little gains were made here and there, but they all lost. That's bad news. Um, but there are other things happening astrologically that empower us to come together for each other, with each other. That's That's the move, to not be divisive, to not be like, yeah, 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 except for those people. You know, I I want it almost sounds like you're saying rather than fighting the powers that be, we come together to help each other because going to fight them isn't going to fix anything, but helping thy neighbor in a sense will. It's, it's what it is, is that it is not enough to hate the enemy. You must love the people you're struggling to fight for. You must love the people or the cause that you are motivated by. And we, it is so much easier to motivate through hate and anger and defensiveness than through love and empathy mm-hmm. and compassion, because so many of us have empathy fatigue. And so many mm-hmm. of us are just trying to cope. And, you know, because I'm an astrologer and I saw this coming, you know, I have been particularly sad in 2022 especially sad in 2022 because of how I've seen people in this country respond to COVID and how so many liberals and progressives um, and conservatives, everybody has been like throwing away their masks, throwing away their masks, throwing away their masks because I want to go to a party because I'm tired because it's been a long time because they're uncomfortable, all perfectly valid reasons. But it means that immune compromised people are just left to fend for themselves they're kicked out of society essentially and incredibly vulnerable. And that's not the only reason why it's concerning, but that's why I have been especially concerned because if we can't wear a damn uncomfortable, but potential fashion accessory on our face to take care of the elderly, people with cancer, people, little kids who can't wear masks, other people who for whatever medical reason, maybe can't wear a mask. If we can't do that, how are we going to do the things that are going to be required of us? That Just, has been my... People can't even yeah. cover their mouths when they cough. I am horrified. horrified. Listen, I feel like, you know, my mom, when she, when we were dealing with uh, COVID, you know, she was immune compromised. My dad was too. They wore masks. And I feel like that's safe enough. But if you're out amongst people and they're coughing and sneezing and sniffling and they're not covering their mouths, it's like, it's even more, it's like a whole other level of like, okay, yes. everyone has their rights. I believe if you don't want to wear your mask, don't wear your mask. But, you know, it's like, can you just cover your mouth? Can you just have yeah. some manners? <laughs> yeah. Like, It's, I think that in the U, I, re, you know, I'm old enough to remember when we could smoke anywhere we wanted. I remember going to the laundromat and everyone was smoking. I remember being on planes and, you know, I would sit in the non-smoking section, but it was like one seat behind the smoking section. I was on a plane full of cigarettes. No that was way. Just a thing. Yes, that's the thing, you know, and everybody smoked everywhere. You went to the grocery store, people were smoking. That was Oh normal. my God. I'm so glad I didn't really live in that world. Well, <sighs> it wasn't that long ago. And I'm not even that much older than you, but like it really wasn't that long ago, but it was an individual rights thing. I have yeah. the right to smoke even though it might make you sick, even though it might make you uncomfortable. And as a nation, we and I won't speak of the whole world, but as a nation, we were completely comfortable with that until enough evidence came out that how dangerous it was to our health, our collective health. And then we changed the laws and society hated it. Some parts of society hated it. Other parts of society were so grateful for it. And it took a long time. And you still, you go on an airplane and it has all those stickers saying, don't smoke in the laboratory because it wasn't that long ago, right? Mm -hmm. It seems like who the hell is going to smoke in a laboratory on a plane? That seems ridiculous. Someone smoked on my plane to London. We had to all (laughs) deplane. This is what I'm talking about. It's still, Mm -hmm. this is the thing because it wasn't that long ago. And I, I share this because... I am for individual rights. And I also 
think that there is a difference, you know, because like, it's not just about individual rights when it comes to smoking, just like, because it's COVID is, you know, spread through droplets, it is a very dangerous thing to say it's just individual rights, because if everyone's exercising their individual rights to do something that isolates a massive population, part of the population, which is growing all the time because having COVID can make you immune compromised. I mean, mm-hmm. it gets really complicated. And, you know, and I know that some people are going to be furious with me for saying this. And some people are just, I'm going to, you know, every time I talk about this, I get flooded with people who are very angry about the idea of wearing masks. Um, and I think that it's very, you know, I think it's very important that we are able to look at why why our doctors and dentists have been wearing masks for, you know, a very long time, at least 100 years, probably a lot more than that, right? I don't know about the history of mask wearing by surgeons, but there's a reason why. It's to keep us safe. And I think that the the bottom line is that as a society, we are highly individualistic here in the U.S., And we wear that as a badge of pride. And I don't think that's a bad thing, but there's a place. It's like, just like with all good things, it can become problematic. So where is the line between individualism and toxic individualism? And who draws that line? You know, who needs to suffer? (laughs) Who's on the backs of those of us who make those determinations? And this, you know, if we pull back from COVID specifically, this values-based moralistic question is one that I believe that we as a nation are grappling with. And that means that those of us as individuals who live here are grappling with it in our personal individual lives one way or another, consciously or unconsciously. And this will continue throughout um, the coming years from my perspective astrologically. And within that, I think that... um, there are major themes around the internet, which are worth speaking to. Now, I know I'm kind of zipping past some big, heavy topics. So I guess I should pause and be like, do you have any questions? Like, did I zip too fast? No, you're not zipping too fast. I mean, so World War, cool. <laughs> when are we looking at that? Um, <laughs> I mean, this is And it was thing. interesting that you were dissecting it down to even cyber war and obviously financial collapse. Like, are there... Are there periods? I think you said the financial thing, was it March? Um, So something is starting, one thing is starting in June that the last time it happened, there was a really intense recession. It was was a terrible time economically in much of the world and certainly in the U.S., very specifically in the U.S. Um, There are a number of indicators of uh, financial problems. Unfortunately, you know, I've, I've heard other astrologers say that they think it's going to be great financially this year. Uh, it's not my take. Um, so I would say that it's already begun. And when you ask about World War, I would say it's already begun. Because, you know, when I was looking at, and I don't want to get too detailed about this, but when I was looking at, you know, so astrology is basically just we're tracking events through time right? So it's a different lens of looking at history. So there is something that is about, that is just starting now that the last time it happened is when the Holocaust began. Now the Holocaust began before the World War II, right? Holocaust began in 33, World War II began in 35. So 19, I'm speaking 19 for the, for the youngins here. So, um, so, you know, when we talk about World War, Again, I know that's really terrifying. So again, I I apologize. But when we talk about that, what we're talking about is the ongoing destabilization in multiple regions of the world where eventually, you know, nations fight against each other to protect or, or hold down certain nations, right? So what you need is the destabilization of multiple nations in advance of a world war. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a few things have to crack. Before it's already happening it goes, though. I yeah. mean, there's already more than a few things cracking. There's already more than a few things cracking. Um, and is there potential for societies and world powers, world leaders? Cause there's a difference between those two things, um, to have their voices heard, to make a difference. Yes. 
Does it look like we are poised here in the U.S. to do anything of the sort? Not so much. Again, there's a ma major role that COVID is playing in all of this because everyone is burnt out, everyone is exhausted, and even people who don't really think that COVID is real or a big deal, everyone is navigating this like unprecedented global phenomenon and having to return to this conversation about whether or not it's dangerous and whether or not it'll kill you, whether or not it'll give you long-term health problems, yada, yada. So we can't separate COVID from all of these other things because it's made us vulnerable everywhere. And that vulnerability puts us as individuals in our feelings in a way that is related to how we cope with flight or fight mechanisms, right? Fight, flight, or fawn mechanisms. And as individuals, when we are dealing with our sense of survival is when we tend to act like the biggest dicks. And that's because we're so scared, we feel entitled. So now think of millions, let's say billions of people all in their flight or fight. How do we as a, what happens when humans get that scared? Historically, we know the worst is what happens. Um, specific populations become scapegoated. And this again is already happening here and abroad. Um, so when you ask when, I would say it's already, it, I mean, the balls, the balls are all rolling down the hill. They're all collecting snow as we speak. And Hopefully somebody's going to, or something's going to stop it. And then this is as bad as it gets. But I would suggest that in terms of um, global conditions and the, the population safety, things are not better now than we were last time we spoke, you know, in, in some ways, in some places they're a little better, but globally they're, they're not better. Um, and there's a lot of very dangerous men in power in many countries. And, and it's such a privilege to be able to be like, eh, not in my country. I don't have to worry. But like, we all, it's a world. It's one world. Like, we all have to be concerned about each other. And, you know, again, as an astrologer, as a spiritual person, but also as a grown up, I very much am seeing the interconnectedness of things and understand that, well, I am now nobody's idea of a world leader. Um, I, as an individual, I'm a participant because I'm here and choosing to pretend it's not happening is how you're choosing to participate, right? And looking away from the suffering of others, prioritizing your comfort over the, the needs or welfare of others. I mean, these things are how we participate. And so I unfortunately do see that we must figure out how to personally, legislatively, uh, collectively integrate more sustainable empathy into our actions, our choices. And that's hard. It's hard for really empathetic people because we get burnt out. And it's hard for people who are not wired to really care that much for others, right? Because there's lots of people on both sides and everything in between. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, I would say already, we're already there. And I think, you know, returning to what I'm sure I said last time we spoke about this, the Pluto return of the United States is a, the Pluto return of any nation is often associated with the fall of a nation. And, you know, what I was saying this time last year is now being said in mainstream news, which is, you know, will we have the collapse of American democracy? Um, you know, the more v. Harper ruling would effectively end democracy in the United States. And if, you know, anyone's listening doesn't know what Moore v. Harper is, please look it up. We have a very conservative Supreme Court and they all have lifetime appointments. And they were not elected by the people and they have all the power and they very well may choose to give the power to elected officials to change the results of elections to not accept the results of elections, which would mean that that's what Morphe Harper is. I mean, I'm wow, I didn't even know that. Yeah. It's very important to look up. Um, wow. so that's essentially what Morphe Harper will do. And, and that's on the desk of the Supreme court, Supreme court right 
now. And this is the thing. How can, how, who can keep up? How I am, I obsessively consume news, um, but it's very hard to keep up. I'm and it's the even opposite. I obsessively <laughs> stay away. <laughs> and I think most people who are spiritual and highly empathetic do stay away. And it always worries me because it's the people who care the most and who are, who would be the most likely to do something socially, if not politically, who are uninformed. So you can't do anything until it's too late. And then you feel terrible and it reinforms why you stay away from the news because it's terrible. So it becomes a cycle. I am a fan of knowing what's happening as it's happening so that I can do my energy work. So I can do, I can, you know, make my calls, use my resist bot, do all those kinds of things because there is a very strong, very powerful movement in the United States, and it's not new, of white Christian nationalism. And they are highly organized and highly involved in politics. They're doing the grunt work, and we're not. And it's dangerous. And it's dangerous to anyone who's not Christian, who's not white, who's not straight, um, who's disabled. I can keep going. Anyone who's poor, like I could keep going, unfortunately. It's, we're in a very dangerous time. and so. What will happen midway through the year is that the Pluto return will get this intense turbo jet shot of energy when Chiron comes back to where it was when this nation was established. And so I imagine that from this summer onwards, we are going to have some pretty dramatic um, developments, legislative, uh, but also social you know, and that might mean more violence. And then this brings me to the cyber stuff, which is the internet is having its first Saturn return because, you know, while the parts, the components that the internet are comprised of have been around since the 1960s, um, the internet was only really incorporated about 29 and a half years ago, 29, 30 years ago. So, you know, it became like this marketplace where people could like use it. So again, I'm old enough that I remember being like, the internet, what is this? Um, you want me to use an ATM card to take my money out of the bank? Yes, those are the things that I thought. Um, and so the the internet is having its first Saturn return. It's And this is happening exactly on time as AI is emerging. I don't know if you've played with chat GPT or any of these other AI platforms yet, but it AI is here. It is here and it is going to dramatically change the internet, but not just the internet, how we think, how we study, um, access What's to information. chat GT? Chat GP, P like Paul T, uh -huh. is a, it's a chat form of AI. It is currently free. It will not remain free. Um, and it's from the, I can't remember the parent company's name. Again, I'm not an expert on this, right? But it, beca it became kind of unveiled to the public maybe a month ago. And in its first week, it had a million users. It had a million users in its first week, and but it hasn't caught on to the populace quite yet. It will. And you can basically go to Ch chat GPT and say, please give me an SEO, uh, like tools for how to do SEO on my website. Uh, please explain this legal document to me. Write me a, contra a contract between me and my agent. You can use it for any number of things. I'm, Have you, I'm so dying because someone told me, I was with a couple of moms and they said that their kids are using it to write their papers, write papers. Yeah. and they're individual. So it's not a copy. So I could say, write me a paper on, you know, the rise of Julius Caesar yes. and they'll write an individual paper for me. They'll make it an A plus and I don't even have to do the work. Yeah. But just if my friend asks for one, it will be the same. I mean, it'll be different. It it'll won't be, be the same. it'll be different, theoretically different. And so the thing about AI, and this is very important for people to know, is that what AI does is it combs the internet, the pre-existing internet. So this particular iteration of AI is only updated until 2021. So nothing from 2022 or 2023 will the AI be, have access to on the internet. But it can comb the internet to create what seems like original works, but all it is is a uh, kind of reorganization of existing content, right? And so I asked it 
Um, I've asked it tons of questions. I've used it in lots of ways because I'm a curious person and I want to know what's happening, right? So one of the things I asked it, it got wrong and I knew it was wrong. And so I said, that's wrong. Tell me about X. And because I wanted it, I wanted to point it towards the correct question. And then it told me about the thing that would have made it more correct. Um, and I will say that it is often wrong, which is fascinating. Wow. And so th there's like a number of things. It, it articulates bias because all technology is created by humans and all humans have bias. So that's one thing is it articulates bias. The other thing is it's not always accurate, correct, or right. And then to the part that you named, which is it has already forever changed education, in particular for children, because a teacher cannot know if an eighth grader said, write at an eighth grade level, a paper about Julius Caesar, include a couple spelling mistakes. You can't, you can't know. There's no way for the teachers to know. So teachers wow. are going to have to learn about AI. Teachers who are already struggling, who are already underpaid, uh, under supported, are going to have to learn about AI and create completely new forms of assignment based on the understanding of what AI is and what it isn't. And so will they learn to write? Will they learn to as like research and put together ideas. They don't have to. No child who has access to the internet at this moment has to ever yeah. again. And what wow. will happen, of course, is it will become, they'll, it'll be, it'll be, there'll be a cost. And so it'll become a class divide who has access to essentially cheating, right? Um, but that's just the tip of the iceberg, you know? And and what's happening this year is that Pluto, the planet Pluto, is moving into Aquarius for a few months. It'll move back out of Cap, out of Aquarius and into Capricorn. And then in 2024, it will enter into Aquarius where it will stay until 2044. And everything I'm talking about, I talk about in great detail on my podcast. I have a year ahead uh, episode that is just like me detailing this stuff. What's the name of the podcast so everyone knows? Oh. Thank you. Um, my podcast is called Ghost of a Podcast, and it's episode, I didn't number it, but 292. It's just called the Year Ahead, 2023 Year Ahead episode. So you can listen to it there where I break this stuff down. Um, but Pluto moving into Aquarius means a lot of things. But one major thing that I'm looking out for is, again, cybersecurity issues, cyber war. Um, and that includes, is not limited to, it includes AI. It includes all of our smart devices in our homes that are literally filming us and taping us. They know everything. What is do. doing that? All, every single one of your smart devices. That's but the problem with smart devices. So my Siri phone is filming you, you? If you use, if you use, no, your phone isn't okay. filming you if you have the camera closed, if you're not using it. But okay. there are apps like, for instance, Siri. So not all of them are doing both. Let me be clear. But there is, a, I can't remember, I wish I had a receipt for this one because I cannot remember. I glanced at it, but I was like on the run and then I lost it. But there is this website that was started with all these photos of women on the toilet taken by their robot vacuum cleaners or robot mops. Yeah, some creep uploaded this shit. Yes. Did you know that it could do that? I did not know that it could do that. No. But how, but, but this is to say, when you, for instance, use Siri or Amazon or Google, those smart things, they are literally listening to everything you say. Is there really a world, do we really believe, where they're not holding on to that data, that they're not aggregating that data and using it to sell to people who want to sell us things or to the government, right? And most people are like, eh, I got nothing to hide. What do I care? But the point is not just more our individual safety. It's understanding that we're living in a world as crazy as it sounds, where we call them smart devices, but let's call let's let's act like it's the 1950s, where robots, the dang robots, are listening to us and they're telling people with power who we don't know how they're using that information, and we have we're becoming reliant on them. You know, personally, me, I don't have any smart items, and every once in a while, I will buy like I bought a really nice electric toothbrush and it's smart, but I don't use it as smart. I've never used the smart component of it. So it's like, uh, you can use a smart toothbrush so that it like knows how long it has an app associated with it. So it's like 
tracking your use. I don't use them. I just use the toothbrush. Wow. Yeah. Because so I'm, you don't I'm have very an iPhone? concerned. What's that? I have an iPhone. You don't have an iPhone. I do have an iPhone. Okay. And I, but I don't use Siri on it. Um, and I have. So does Siri record us when, because we use it, it's activated. It's just listening. Well, it does because whenever you say it something, it sends you an ad for yeah. that thing. Right how, away. How, how else? Also, how else? If, it, if, if, if you say, Hey Siri, what does it mean when blah, blah, blah? Like, how else would it know? Do you think it's yeah. like not listening until you say, Hey Siri? No, it's listening the whole damn time. Yeah. And so I also, <laughs> every couple months, not every six months, like every two or three months, I go through my phone and I look at the privacy settings because the phone often resets the aggressive privacy settings that I use. Um, and so I go through the privacy settings, every single app that you've downloaded on your phone, there's no reason for most of them to have access to your camera or your microphone. Yeah. Make sure you restrict their access. Why would they need that? Um, there's just so many things that it's like, again, you have to be such a nerd like me to stay on top of all this stuff. I don't have kids. You know, if I had a kid, could I put all this time and energy into paying attention to this stuff? <laughs> no, hell no. You know what I mean? But like, these are really important things to be aware of because like there was this flashlight app. This was a couple of years ago now. And all these people were downloading. It was just a free flashlight app. But it was apparently some like weird thing that was recording everything you said. And it was just, again, who looks at the privacy settings of a free flashlight app? Here's the answer. Nothing's free. Nothing's free. You're the product. When you're the product, be worried. That's my attitude. And so we are already seeing in San Francisco, they tried to have robot cops, literally, not a joke, robot cops that, had the, um, that were empowered to murder, to kill. And they made this into law in San Francisco. Wait, last this is month. real? This real. is this is real. not a movie. Google, Google, Google. It's right there robot, for you. Robot cops robot in cops. San Francisco that were allowed to kill. Yes. And there was such an aggressive outcry from the population that they pulled it back. But the point is they have them. And if they started that in San Francisco, that's what's coming. That's where we are. Oh so again, God. I know I, I don't mean to like give you panic. News. Holy shit. This is this is my this is my attitude. It's like again, it's Meanwhile, I did not think this is where we were going today. This is like <laughs> this is a lot, my I'm god. So sorry. I just so This is the thing about astrology is that there are many astrologers who are so good at astrology, right? Um, but they're not aware of what's happening in the world. So how do you understand the data in context of the world, if you're not aware of the world, how do we do that when making the decision to have a child or, you know, to move to a specific region if you don't know what's happening with the climate there? You know, yeah. um, like I was looking at the weather in uh, Reno, Nevada, because I want to go, it's my birthday soon. I was like, I want to go to Reno. I haven't been to Reno in a million years. And I was looking at the weather and I was like, OMG, because I'm from Montreal, Quebec, which is north of Vermont, right? Meaningfully north of Vermont. And it was, it's all week warmer in Montreal than it is in Reno. Yeah. I was like, what? Wait, what? And there's such wild things happening with the climate right now that again, I personally don't see how we can separate human behavior, corporate behavior, which I hold separate from human behavior. Um, and the climate and technology. Like we cannot separate all of these things. And so again, being aware of all of them empowers us to make the best possible choices. And I mean, you don't need to be an astrologer to say, we're going to see major climate developments in these coming years, you know? And again, we can't separate this from concerns of war mm -hmm. because already we see these intense refugee crises across the world. And a lot of it has to do with a lack of resources leading to destabilized regions, poverty. If you can't have food, you can't have water. People start warring over it. Where do they mm -hmm. go? So yeah. again, you know, all of these things is, are really worth being educated about and they're worth caring about. And from my perspective as an astrologer, 2023 will be a year where we start to care. And I don't just mean like feel, but care with our actions, you know, which requires education, unfortunately. Um, 
Or there, this will be a year where we fall down these rabbit holes that compete for our attention, TikTok streams, you know, uh, whatever it is, like just checking out, checking out, checking out. Or again, this like toxic individualism where we're only concerned with our individual wellness. And then these collective problems can get worse and worse and worse. And the people paying attention often have nefarious aims. So we could have problems. But again, there is a hope here, which is if each of us as individuals makes a shift towards more education and empathy and caring, then everything changes. And we see this over and over and over again, certainly domestically, like using San Francisco as an example. The people were like, hell the fuck, no. I can say the fuck, right? Yes. Okay, I did it. Especially did it in that case. Especially, that's how I feel. <laughs> people were like, no, 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 no. And it wasn't just a couple of people. It was a bunch of individuals. Many individuals yeah. had an outcry and that instantly changed things. It's really, I'm sitting here thinking about my brother and Kelsey, you'll laugh. I mean, when I say like level paranoia, one billion He's like, he doesn't have anything connected to anything. He's like detached his, all of his accounts on social media. He is like, everyone's watching, everyone's taking data. And we just all like think he's nuts. <laughs> and he's sounding a lot smarter I mean, right now. This is the thing is like, he's not wrong, but is going off grid the answer? And who's it the answer for? You know, going off analog, like not being on social media, not using any devices at all. Unless that's paired with doing something, you know, it ends up being that like, yeah, you, you turn yourself into a little, little coconut, you know, a little coconut in the corner. And everyone's like, that's a cute little coconut, but what is he going to do? Like, what ca mm -hmm. can't talk to him. We have to call him on the landline. Like, how do we do that? Like, you know, it's like, I'm not saying that going off grid is bad, but it's not an answer of that helps the collective. It's an answer that yeah. helps the individual. So where's the middle ground? And I, I am happy to say there's a lot of middle ground. There's a, there's a huge middle ground because most people don't want to be spied on. Most people um, want to have the freedom to, I don't know, talk to their friends about getting a foundation and not have that ad then shoved down their throats for two months until they actually buy the fucking foundation, right? <laughs> like most people want to be able to live in, in the world <laughs> safely. Yeah. So the question is, do we, I don't know, institute better building regulations so that homes become passive homes and, and instead of smart homes, smart homes are basically homes where we are just being trapped in our content all the time. I mean, I really enjoy scrolling through TikTok and I'm stunned by how many people have their Amazon or Google or whatever, cameras filming them and their families 100% of the time, the audio and the video, just it's on all the time. Yeah. That I never got an Alexa or any of that for a reason. It's smart. And you know, my computer, I use an Apple computer is constantly trying to trick me into turning on my Siri, constantly trying to trick me into turning on my Siri. Like I said, my phone will reset the apps so that my privacy settings, which are excellent. Um, oh, that's are, why it makes you re-download them. Yep. 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 Pay attention. Oh, I will and that's why they're offloading them and then you have to re-download them. <gasps> yeah. Oh Cause goodness. you're not paying attention because you're just pressing buttons and moving on with your life. Yeah. We're just click, click, click. We got to go. We get shit yeah. to do. So, you know, for your brother or people like your brother who are like, okay, fine, I'm getting offline. The better way to go is to just get a VPN to get, um, a VPN is just something you can run on your computer and it, it pings your location so that you cannot be tracked in the material world in the same way. It gives you more online safety. Honestly, I think it's going to become basically like locking your door at night for everyone within a decade. Wait, um, so you go online and mm -hmm. you look up VPN. Yes, VPN. And what, you download it to your computer and mm -hmm. your iPhone? Yep, bada bing, bada boom. Easy, it's easy. There's very complicated ways for more tech savvy people, but I I have um, a VPN, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called iVPN. Um, and I have it on my phone and on my computer. And a couple apps honestly won't work if I have it on. So I have to toggle it off when I'm using certain apps. But that's interesting. You know, some of the apps have a good reason. Like, you know, 
I can't use my Waze app because it's like tracking my location, right? Um, but most apps have no real reason, except for that they're obviously making money off of the, my data and they're not willing to let me use the app for free unless they get that barter. So it's yeah. really important to be aware. And this is this is the thing that deeply concerns me is that technology has advanced so quickly, so much more quickly than legislation to protect humans and our awareness and our ability to cope. And so these are all really important things. I once went to this event, it was before COVID, it was this live event, and I can't remember which platform, maybe it was Vox. It was like some platform put it together and it was all about cybersecurity. And uh, they had us do this exercise where whoever was giving the talk was like, okay, have you ever put this any of these words on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, didn't matter. Um, Maybe this was even before Instagram. But anyways, the we had to stand up if we had ever written these words. And it was words like pig, Nicaragua. Like it was words that really surprised me. Um, some of them were like, you know, I wasn't super surprised, like bombs or whatever. But like, you know, pig, really? Um, like the names of countries, really? But, you know, I stood up for, I would say I, I stood up for most of the words. Um, and, you know, half the room didn't start up, stand up for any. But you know, it was the Bay Area. A lot of people stood up and the person was like, okay, so you're on at least one federal list for having used any of these words, individual words on social media. And this was years ago now. So again, if we knew, (laughs) if we knew more, we would do more. And our complacency is you know, it is, it's not what I thought we were going to talk about either, but it's something I feel so passionately about as a, as a person, as a citizen, but also as an astrologer, because I see what's coming. And this is the thing. It's like, you know, people talk about late stage capitalism. At a certain point, it becomes very hard to change a system without destroying that system. And it's very hard to destroy a system. You know, especially a system that most people aren't educated about and don't think can or should change. And so when we talk about something like the internet, this becomes really important because it's very hard to change a system that people aren't even aware that they're participating in because we don't have to give our consent. You know, when you walk through an air in the airport, they take your photo and they match that on a screen to your passport photo, right? To opt out of having your photo taken is a real pain in the ass, but you do zero things to opt in. Mm. And this has only started a couple of years well, ago. And also, let's be real. We live in a time where we give away our consent just to yeah. get whatever it is. Like I hit agree every time on my iPhone just to say, leave me alone. I accept yeah. all cookies all the time because I'm like, I just want to read what this is. Yep. That's we it. We are not paying attention. And so this is definitely making me rethink that and be more aware. What are you doing with all of this knowledge? I mean, like when you think of a financial recession, that's worse than, I mean, it's been bad enough as it is. Yeah. Um, Yeah. are you, are you, did you, you know, are you an investor? Did you take out of investments? Are you saving? Are you, uh, you know, getting passports for other countries? I mean, you already are in another country technically. So I'm, I'm in the U S but I'm Canadian. I'm a dual citizen. Dual, but yeah, yeah. So I am lucky that I don't have to do that, but I, I'm not an investor at all. Um, I really anti-capitalist values and it's very difficult to invest ethically, unfortunately. So I don't do that. Um, What I'm doing with all this information is, in effect, the same thing I did when I saw an airborne Mm -hmm. virus that would be devastating back in 2017 coming in 2020. I'm doing the very little that I can and trying to keep on living. (laughs) Because if if there is like a, a economic crash or global or national recession, who can get ahead of it? Different financial people will have different theories about the way for, you know, the middle class or for poor people to try to um, manage these things, right? But at the end of the day, we're all just kind of scrambling, right? Mm -hmm. We're all just kind of scrambling. So for me, I, you know, I have in the last 
I would say since 2019, I have changed my spending in a really dramatic way because I knew that we were entering into this period of destabilization. And um, I just spend, I, tr- I try to spend less on stupid shit, basically. Fun, fun, stupid things. And I am, you know, I'm thinking a lot about getting a generator. Um, you know. <laughs> Got those, thank God. Yeah, that's the, it, it's like, if you can afford it, it's an investment. It's a, it's a financial investment to get a generator. You have to have the space. You know, if you're renting an apartment, that's not an option for most people. Um, but yeah, it's, a generator is a great thing. Like there's a lot of things like survival-y things that I have. Um, but this is the problem with the stuff that we're talking about. And we are talking about astrology, but we kind of not talking about in astrological terms, right? Is that how do you use prediction? You can see why I started the conversation the way I did. How do you use prediction? Because does it make me feel sad and bad? Yes. But I am a believer, if you touch a hot stove, it should hurt your hand because that tells you, hey, hot stoves, hands, not a good mix. And feeling bad about bad things is healthy and good, I think. And I think a lot of us just don't ever want to feel bad. And that means we just walk around in the ignorance is bliss stage until we get slammed. So my attitude is I do feel sad and bad about a lot of things a lot of time. Um, And also... I do my best to share things as constructively as possible. I fear that we've gotten so detailed in this conversation that it that won't feel constructive to a lot of people because it's hard to hear any of it, let alone like all of it at once. And again, I'm not an expert in any of these things that we're talking about. So like, it, you know, if people are hearing this and they're like, I want to know about more V Harper or I want to know more about like what is Siri or ain't, Amazon or whatever. What are, what are they hearing? What what does that contract say? There are experts out there who can help you to decode these things. Um, and it's just like, who has the time? A lot of people don't have the time. They don't have the energy. But mm. it is valuable to, like, if you're listening to this podcast or you're watching this on YouTube, to find someone on these platforms, check their credentials, check their credentials, and, you know, and listen to them is, is my advice. So I know I'm just kind of going off. This is why, like, listen, no one ever wants to hear bad things, but it is nice to be aware of things that we can change. Yeah. And also interesting, my my new year kind of um, word or kind of mantra, whatever I was calling it, I just kept getting this thing in my meditations, like it's all about love. It's all about love. Mm-hmm. And, and it was really strong at the end of the year. And I was like, ooh, love is going to heal me and heal others, but also love is going to be what makes a difference. Yeah. And that means loving even the people who hurt you, um, sending them love and knowing that they're in pain and, or, you know, they're in a bad way or they're going down a bad path. Okay. I'm just going to send love because it's better for me and it's better for everybody. So it's interesting to me that that's kind of where I'm at and it makes sense to, to what's kind of going on in the world. So it's, it's perfectly on time. Like, it, and, and I think, you know, when people hear love, they think a lot of things, but really I, I've come to want to say love is an action like struggle. And when people think of love as an action, like struggle, it's, it's important because then we realize it's not just enough to feel love. We must act from love. And, um, and I think that this is a really important thing. I There's a story that I learned. Now, I'm, I'm Jewish. So I, it's like a Christian story, I think. And I am sure that I am telling it wrong. And so... Um, <laughs> You're like me. I lo- I know the gist of things. And I'm yes. like, Just don't fully quote me. I, I know the feeling. And I remember that part. <laughs> exactly. That is exactly it. And I've come to telling this story in like a weird way. But it, it, if you'll indulge me for just a moment, I'm going to tell this. It's a stupid and I'm sure I'm doing it wrong. I feel like it's like, I don't know if you're old enough to remember um, Footprints in the Sand was in every mm-hmm. like school guidance counselor. Do you remember that poster? Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of a Footprints in the Sand story where it's basically like there was this person and they were talking to God or whatever you want to call it. And they were like, and God was like, hey, listen, no matter what happens, I got your back. And so the person was like, cool. And then there was a flood. There was a flood and all the people came and they were like, hey, it's time to evacuate. And they were like, I don't need to worry. 
God's got my back. And so they were like, okay. And they left. And then the waters were rising and they were had to go upstairs, the second floor of their house. And somebody came in a boat and they were like, hey, hop in the boat. I got you. Uh, you don't have to drown. And the person was like, don't worry about me. God's got my back. And uh, they were like, are you sure? And they said, yes. And so they left. And then water's rising, water's rising. Person's on the roof. And they're waiting. They're waiting for God, right? And so a uh, helicopter comes and they're like, hey, we can save you. You know, just draw, hold on to the rope. And the person was like, don't worry about me. God's got my back. Um, and I know there was where this is going. <laughs> yeah, they died. They died. And when they died, they were like, hey, God, what? You said you were going to help me. He's like, and I was there that all was, the time. Exactly. Like I sent you a boat. I sent you a car. I sent you a helicopter. You didn't take any of it. And so it's not just about having faith. It's not just about having love. It's about taking agency, taking authority over our own choices, making sure they are actively a reflection of our faith, of our love. And I think when we talk about spiritual work so many times we get lost in just again the individualistic feelings part and we forget that that is the foundation to the actions part the actions part is on us and the astrology of 2023 is going to require us to have emotional intelligence in such a way that we can experience and activate from love, even when we're like, and you suck, <laughs> you know, I don't agree with you or in, or in contradicting situations, basically. And this is hard. It's very hard work. And, and yet here we are. And so again, it's, it's really, I feel like on us as individuals, to care about each other as well as ourselves. And that's really hard for people who struggle to care about themselves. And it's really hard when there are people who are actively trying to harm you, which is true for many people, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. So, you know, I know this is not the most positive. Let me give you some positive things about the year ahead. I would love to hear that. And then I, I have another question for you after. Okay. Okay. Uh, should I save my positive for after your question? Uh, no, it's okay. Okay. So, um, okay. Positives, not my forte, but here we go. <laughs> uh, so positives are, uh, okay. There with the, uh, all the stuff around technology that I talked about, there are likely to be both medical advancements that are really wonderful for society mm -hmm. and also technological advancements can, uh, both improve the, climate crisis, like help us to cope with the climate crisis, but also improve life in general. Like the advancements within technology and the pharmaceutical industries actually look really big. We also have Jupiter moving into Taurus this year, and there's some pros and cons of all things, but on the pro side, um, this transit can lead us to being more um, loving and caring in a material way for ourselves and others. And this can also be a period where we see massive developments in the arts. And when I say the arts, it includes the esoteric arts, kind of like we're talking about now, but also, you know, the whole world of arts. And so for people who are creative, this is a very powerful year to be putting yourself out there and experimenting with new modalities or just like creating stuff um, for the joy of creating and to see what emerges from there, because that that is a really positive, wonderful thing. So that was my positive. It's what you okay. got. I like the um, medical advances. It's funny. It was the first thing because my question was about health and, you know, knowing that that's our mission here is to help everybody heal from all areas of life, right? Whether it's finances or relationships, but with such a focus on health and wellness and knowing that that is my passion and where I want to take this is, you know, to take that to whole other levels. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, wow, I'm getting a little discouraged that people aren't going to have enough time to think about their health. They're going to be thinking about, you know, greater things. And it made me think that any other people who are listening, who have things they want to build, they're going to be discouraged too and say, oh, well, my stupid little coffee shop business isn't going to, you know, uh, be the right time. There's going to be a recession and who's going to be worried about coffee when you can just go somewhere else. And it, it made me think of that. And so- yeah. What do you say yeah. to all so, of us with this? I, I, so there, there's kind of like two different things. One is health. 
I really do believe that health is foundational to our ability to sustain our work. So whether we're talking about emotional health, mental health, spiritual health, or physical health, um, they're all the at the foundation of our capacity to sustain our efforts in life. And so I don't think it's either or. I mean, I say all the things I say, I share all the things I share, and you better believe I am obsessed with my health, all those levels of health, and I do a million things to maintain my health and to cope with my problems. Um, and sometimes it's overwhelming and hard, and that means some weeks I don't think about the world. We can't sustain 100% of energy and attention to 100% of the things that we care about all the time. It's about pacing ourselves. And that means some days or some weeks or some months are gonna be all about one thing instead of another. It's just important that we remember to return to the world and to not place ourselves outside of the world because none of us are. And that does not apply to people who are in crisis, obviously. You know, if you're dealing with a health crisis, that requires your attention or the health crisis of a loved one that requires all of your attention and that you drop everything, then God damn it, drop everything. You know, it's, it, we don't want to use general rules to minimize our individual needs. So I, I would say that. And then in regards to the coffee shop question, <laughs> I just made that up. Was, no, but it's a perfect example. It's actually, um, a big reason why I stopped taking one-on-one -on -one clients, uh, so 2019 was my last year working with clients full time. And it's because of that coffee shop question, because when we're dealing with such collective social, political, economic instability, how do you make plans for your future? And I don't want to be a bummer 100% of the time, but I am conservative and you can understand why I'm conservative because I have these hot takes, right? Um, so I think we all have individual choices to make. Like, is it worth it to throw in your hat and your shoes and your socks and your pants for your dream? For some people right now, the answer is going to be like, yes, it is worth it. And I say, take the risk. Would I recommend, you know, putting all your life savings in a coffee shop right now? Absolutely not. No, no person would I recommend that for. Um, I would only recommend that for someone who has money to lose, mm -hmm. you know, um, but you cannot live in accordance with a neurotic, news-obsessed astrologer. You got to live your life, you know? Yeah, and, and you so, can't live in fear. Like, no. if we had all shut down our lives when COVID happened, right? Because at first, it's like, oh my gosh, the world is ending. Yes, yes. Think of how many people prospered because yes. they kept going. Mm -hmm. So you can't stop things, I know, but it is your first reaction when you hear... Yep this kind of stuff. You're like, Oh, I want to go into my turtle shell. I got to save all my money. I can't spend. I got to right. do this. Oh my right. God. But the truth is, um, collectively the way we survive is by keep keeping on and it's creating going. a world that we want to be in. It's mm -hmm. being, it's participating in healthy ways. And this is, again, this is where I was like individuals, when we're scared, we do the worst. You know, we stop living, we stop dreaming, we stop taking care of others. We just go in our turtle shell and we're mm -hmm. like, how can I protect myself? Shit, I'm dying before anything even happens. And so it's really about taking this information and of course using your common sense because you have a mason jar of salt this whole time at the table, which I'm sure a lot of people forgot that they had that jar. Don't forget you have the jar. So, you know, what you do is you make determinations. You say to yourself, I'm going to take this risk because I want to live and this is how I want to live. Or I was on the fence about this risk and I've thought about things maybe that I've heard in this conversation and I'm going to use that information to adjust my goal or adjust my approach. It's about do all your panic that you need to, but then come back to common sense, come back to reality, you know, make sure that like, we don't want to be tra-la-la, -la, head in the stars, everything's fine. And we don't want to be the sky is falling, chicken little. Like, and no matter what I do, I'm going to suffer. There's no point in doing anything. Like, neither of those things are sustainable. Mm -hmm. But they're both very common places for us to go when we get to scary news. This is the problem with astrology. You know, it's, it's that it offers prediction. And when we're dealing with prediction, we're also dealing with human's capacity to seriously take bad news. And a lot of astrologers don't give bad news, but I feel like how can you give uh, reliable news if you don't give bad news? You, you have to give 
all the news, the good, the bad, the ugly. And I, mm-hmm. I think that, I think that you don't need to be an astrologer or psychic to know that the economy is struggling. I mean, look at the front page of, you know, any newspaper today and you will see that. Um, so what do you do with that information? That's again, it's about making grounded determinations and understanding that some of your fear is just fear and it's an emotion that you need to cope with. And some of your fear is like, Oh, I don't like hot stoves and I can see this is a range that's heating up. Like sometimes fear protects us from danger. So Mm -hmm. we don't want to throw away fear. And I feel like in spiritual worlds, a lot of times we're like, fear is bad. Fear is not bad. I'm so glad I'm scared of cars when I'm crossing the street. It means I've never been hit by one. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like I take responsibility for not having been hit by a car because I'm scared of it enough to be like, I'm not going to just walk into traffic. Right? So it's about, being grounded enough to stay with the fear and understand, is this fear that's keeping me safe or is this fear that's making me panic and lose touch with myself and with reality, right? So when we go back to your brother, not he can't hear the podcast. He doesn't have any internet. Um, True. And so when we go back to your brother, like it sounds like from like the one sentence you shared, like either he is scared and he's motivated by fear primarily to get offline and all that kind of stuff, or he's made determinations and most people don't understand them. And I think that the difference in motivation is a really important difference. I think it's a really important difference. Mm -hmm. Um, So check in with your motivation. If you're like motivated through panic about whether or not to have the coffee shop, okay, then you're not in a great place to make a decision, right? So we're back to emotional intelligence and love, actually, because when we're in a state of fear or scarcity, we're not in a state of love, which means we're not in a great place to make a determination. And sometimes we're dealing with authentically scary things. And so we can't completely remove fear from our evaluation, but we can sit with, okay, what is it that my goal is? My goal is, let's say, be healthy. My goal is, let's say, you know, not lose all my money and do something that I actually love for a living, you know? Um, So focus on your determinations, focus on your options and try to make the best ones you can informed by your fear, but not driven by your fear. Mm -hmm. It's a practice and nobody's naturally good at it. You know, it's a, it's a practice. Well, I will say having heard this whole thing, I'm not changing anything I'm doing other than I will be even more mindful of purchases. Like yesterday, I was looking at furniture and a lot of furniture takes forever. So then I was like, Kevin goes, why don't we go on Facebook Marketplace? Maybe there's some new ones that are just, people have new things that they never used and then they're selling. And I was like, wow, what a great way to kind of think about buying furniture. A, I'm going to get it right away. B, someone's selling something that's brand new that they just didn't end up liking maybe or don't want anymore or don't need anymore. So now I'm not consuming in a sense. I'm yes. recycling and 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 being more mindful. So I'll be more mindful of my purchases. Um, I am really glad I didn't invest in the market. <laughs> yes. I think I think it's a great time to be glad of that, honestly. Yeah. You, I, I jumped out problem. in COVID because I was like, how are we going to support giving away so much money and having a country shut down for so long. Like, I don't know about this. And this is blood money. I worked my butt off for this money and my mom was sick. I'm like, I think I'm going to pull out of this. And everyone keeps trying to push me to go back in. I'm like, yeah, I don't really feel like it anymore. I think you're right. And also the, something we didn't talk about is that, you know, cryptocurrencies Oh yeah, that's Our another huge thing. thing. It's 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 very unstable, right? So you have to have money you're willing to lose or money you're willing to not touch. But um, the astrology of Uranus and Taurus and Jupiter's meeting it there often coincides with a meaningful change in currencies, right? So cryptocurrencies have been around for a hot minute, but are they going to become a much bigger player in? American currencies or, you know, yeah. a global currency. Are I they? imagine so. Yes, I imagine so. But how, again, I'm not a financial astrologer. It's not, I find that stuff myself. I, mm-hmm. I, like, I, I fall asleep during it, but I, I feel very convicted that we will see a shift in our currencies. Um, and so again, it becomes, it's so volatile. 
it's so volatile and you have to have a stomach for that kind of risk. You know, I, I have friends who have, who find it fun. I personally do not. So I just, I'm just like, eh, uh, you know, it's not, it's mm-hmm. not my thing, but, but that is the place. If you, if you're willing to do high risk, high reward, that's the place I personally would go um, as an astrologer. Yeah. And and there is, for people who are interested, there are financial astrologers out there. Grace Morris comes to mind, um, who have who are a great track record and can talk to you about stocks and stuff like that, if that's something you want to play with. Um, but it's not not my scope of influence or whatever. It's not my, mm. it's not my field of, of authority. Um, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I feel like, um, again, I remember in the beginning of COVID, we found our surrogate um, I think it was like two or three days before the world shut down and we were so mm. excited and we, you know, funded the account. We were ready to go and COVID happened. And I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not bringing a baby into this yeah. world right now. The world yeah. is ending. And I remember shutting down for, gosh, maybe six, seven months before we even, I was scared. They had, I mean, COVID baby and all of that was and happening. We didn't know what would happen to kids born. Yeah. yeah. And meanwhile, I had a friend who was pregnant. She ended up delivering just fine. Everything mm-hmm. worked out. And so if you live from fear all the time, you will miss out. You yeah. will, you yeah. know, it's like the world goes round. And yeah. so take all of this with maybe 50 grains of salt, uh, 50 jars of salt, because yeah. We have to keep moving. And in the most vulgar of ways, we're cockroaches. You really yeah. can't get rid of us. So we'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. I always say, we'll be fine. We'll figure it out. We shift. We adjust. We're very resilient. Um, but I think knowing that, you know, the financial world isn't in the best place and not going to be for a minute, you know, you you do make choices accordingly. So that's that it. is that. That it's it's making choices. I think that's like really the thing to hold on to is you always just have choices. You have a choice about how you're going to think about it. You're going to have a choice about how you're going to feel about it. And you're going to have a choice around what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. And there's so much that's out of our control. And within that, we have choice, you know? And I, I think so many of us are in choice overload all the time that we forget, you know, how we use our agency, the choices we make, they are what defines us, not our thoughts, not our feelings. It's what we do. And so, you know, using whatever information you get, whatever information you decide to prioritize, whatever feelings you decide to prioritize to motivate you towards the best choices you can make right now. And, you know, like even to what you're sharing about, you were just like, "Uh -uh, I'm not bringing a baby into this. And then you had a friend who had a perfectly fine pregnancy. Yes. And also people who've had babies during COVID are raising their kids with more health risks than, than we've ever had to deal with. And there's less community, right? Because there's so many more COVID protections. So it's, that might not have worked for you. And it's just like about really honoring, like you had really strong feelings. Maybe you were motivated by fear and also Fear is not inherently wrong. (laughs) It's just what I want to say. There's a wisdom to knowing your limits, knowing like, I can't take this risk. Yeah, I knew I couldn't take it. I knew I would not be able to be comfortable knowing that someone's carrying my child through crisis. (laughs) It's just... And that feels like a really good choice. Like, I feel like that seems right. And I think I have a lot of empathy for parents who've been new parents and parents who have older kids who've been parenting through a pandemic because it's hard. And, you know, we're, what we're seeing with the hospitals filling up with children right now, it's scary. I don't mm-hmm. have kids, but I'm terrified of it. And so I think, you know, you sharing that example is really good because it's an example where, yes, you were motivated by fear. Yes. You know, maybe it wasn't as bad as you thought or it wasn't as bad as you thought, but that doesn't mean it wasn't right for you. And I think that's like a sticky, messy thing to hold and that's where so many of us on a spiritual path really lose ourselves because the truth is life is sticky and we have paradoxical motivations and it's it's just hard. So I just want to say like, be gentle with yourself, you know, you and also everyone who's listening, like be gentle with yourself because it, it, there aren't always clear answers. There's not always a good answer or a right answer. It's just the best next choice. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's okay. Uh, we just want to be empathetic with ourselves 
as a foundation for how we live our lives because that empowers us to be more authentically empathetic with others. So yeah, just put that in your pipe and smoke I like it. that. It went full circle. Yeah. I love yeah, that. We, we Empath- did. We then you can circle. be empathetic with others, which is what we really need in this world right now. Jessica, this was a very, very interesting, full, intense conversation, but filled with a lot of really good nuggets for us to think about and marinate on and take action on. So thank you um, for that. It's my pleasure. It's such a joy to get to talk to you. And this conversation went real sideways of where we, I thought it was, but it's been, <laughs> it's been really good. And and thanks for letting me uh, scare the bejesus out of you and everybody else a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, I appreciate it. Cause oh yeah, my God. it's a world. Um, what a world I say. All right, friends. Uh, like I said, we will survive and thrive anything. Don't be afraid. Uh, Jessica's website, www.lovelanyadu.com. We will put that in the summary of this episode along with her podcast, Ghost of a Podcast. It's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. In the meantime, be nice people, make good choices and be present. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or mariamenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.